Jurassic Park was one of the most mind-blowing movies that I watched as a kid. I mean, the first couple were just amazing, and I've watched them several times over, and they brought me so much joy and, you know, made my love for dinosaurs just multiply times a million. I've always been a huge Godzilla fan. I think that was probably the first thing that I saw where I was like, I like lizards. They're really cool. And Jurassic Park just added to that. And plus, you know, they had really cool games. I enjoyed the Super Nintendo game. I enjoyed uh, a game that I played on the Sega Genesis that was Jurassic Park related. And so when I saw that there was an actual JonTron video dedicated to Jurassic Park, I was like, holy shit, this is amazing. I can't believe I haven't seen this before and I have got to do a reaction to this. Now, my love for Jurassic Park honestly isn't what it used to be. I still hold out hope just because, you know, the, the beginning of my relationship with Jurassic Park was so good. And now it seems like everything that I've encountered related to Jurassic Park has been a gigantic shart. And I have not been happy about it. In fact, it's frustrating and it's disgusting. But given that this is the combination of Jurassic Park and JonTron, I'm going to give it a shot. So without any further ado, you and I, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go down, down this rabbit hole of watching a JonTron video of old called Jurassic Park, The Lost Potential. Let's check it out. Tron. Hey John, you do video games. Why are you reviewing a movie? How'd they say it? You see these numbers? I was in the Japanese internment camps in 1942. The scars don't wash off. They return. Let me just wash these off. Let's get a game. I look, I look a bit dirty. Jurassic Park, one of the best and most memorable movies from the 90s. It holds a special place in many of our hearts. It was visceral, action-packed, and hell, beyond revolutionary for its time. Remember those special effects? Look how real Jeff Goldblum looks. <laughs> wow. Yeah, we all is. saw a little part of ourselves in the characters on screen. We liked them, we got to know them along the way, we identified with their troubles and quirks, and we really felt ourselves in their shoes when things started to go haywire. I mean, hey, what would you do if you saw a big dinosaur and you had to hide? Probably shine lights at it and scream! Throughout the movie, we felt scared, elated, thrilled, and even heartwarmed. Is that a word? I felt it. That really, one? it did all the things a good movie should do, and it stuck with us all as a monument in filmmaking and as a part of pop culture. I mean, how many people do you know that haven't seen it? And then, Not after many. four years of anticipation, a sequel thrust forth from the loins of Steven Spielberg's mind. Jurassic Park, The Lost World. It was a promise of adventure, mystery, thrills, and Jeff Goldblum couldn't <laughs> fail! In fact, this son of a bitch made over 618 million at the international Killed box it. office, so it didn't fail. Technically. Them. But do you really scale failure and success by hundreds of millions? Yes, yep, mm, yeah. With that much money, you could... Well, you could finance Jurassic Park 3! Oh, no! So did it live <laughs> up? Was it an experience to die oh, for? God. Should I sell all my dolls and put the money in my space stocks? My you know space? You see train coming from a couple thousand yards away. You see a couple had a picnic on the tracks. And you're just out of earshot, so you can't warn them. And they're both deaf and blind. And they can't feel rumbling. Without further ado, here is Jurassic 2. So here we commence on a deserted island where a bunch of rich pricks are enjoying being way too close to the tide. Soon we find the soon to be a prick little girl has wandered off because, you know, dinosaurs are extinct, so who cares? I don't blame her. I'm not worried about them when I go to the beach. I just worry about saying Christmas. She then finds like a, like a saltipus? How do, how do I remember this shit? Oh, but then she's all like, oh, oh wait a minute. I don't think these are turtles at all. And then they proceed to nip the death off screen as we're met with possibly the best shot in all of cinema.
<laughs> now, if you're a struggling filmmaker and you need some advice on how to up the production value in your movie real quick, let me go ahead and give you the rundown. One, two, three, Jeff Goldblum. There you go. Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, that's it. That's all you need. You can go to the, down the street today. We now find that things are picking up four years after the incident in the first movie. We're met once again with scientist John Hammond as he's laying in an intensive care unit in his house because he still wanted money, but he didn't want to be in more than three minutes of a shitty movie. We learned that public disbelief of the events that occurred in the first movie have destroyed the academic reputations of the main characters, and that there is, in fact, a Site B, or Second Island of Dinosaurs, where the dinosaurs were hatched and nurtured before being moved to the main island. Hey, I smell money, do you? Hammond reveals to Goldblum that he's yes. got to follow this sneaky-ass, snake-ass character to the island and stop him from exploiting his dinosaur residence for money or something. You see, he wants the Second Island to be kept as a nature preserve. And then Goldblum's like, hey, hold on, hold on. You want me to go back to an island of dinosaurs? Have you seen Jurassic Park? So Goldblum does what any person without severe brain trauma would do and says, hey, nah, that's okay. You deal with that yourself. And then Hammond proceeds to go, hey, come here for a second. I sent your girlfriend there alone. GG, have fun. Good luck. Bon voyage. That's why you don't fuck with me. I'ma stay here, eat some fucking steak, drink a beer, get a BJ. Hey, maybe from a goddamn dinosaur. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I'm John Hammond. How many billions dinosaur. do I have again? Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, 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 whatever. Come on, come on. Yeah. And they're off to Wild B to save Jeff Goldblum's wife. But hey, it's not that bad of a setup. Could be worse. Could be this movie. Hey, remember! Remember! This guy was in the first one. He remembers that! He remembers what it was like to not have guns while standing in front of that! Ah, but this time it's okay. This time they brought no guns. Wait a second, huh? Ah, no, but it's alright. George Costanza remembered to bring his Nerf gun in case a bird flies by. <laughs> like, you know, small bird. Pigeon about. Like, seriously? Alright, a movie has to have believability to maintain its credibility. The only reason they were so defenseless in the first one is because they didn't expect anything to go wrong on the island. It was supposed to be a theme park safe for thousands of children to visit on a daily basis. Do you bring right. a bazooka to the zoo? I do, is that bad? They're headed straight for an island of wild dinosaurs roaming around with lightsabers and shit, and they didn't. And it and they barely brought anything to protect themselves. That's I didn't fine. Even think no, about that I don't care. Hey, my this. ass. It's Jeff and George. This? Oh yeah, by the way, young Vince Vaughn is in this. So next up, they find Jeff Goldblum's wife fucking around with dinosaurs. Like, really big, dangerous dinosaurs. And then when a stegosaurus comes out from behind her... Uh, actually, excuse me a moment, but how did she not you know, see this? How did she not see a fucking giant stegosaurus? So instead of running away from it, she probably runs towards more stegosauri. And Jeff Goldblum's like, shoot it! And everyone's like, yeah! And George Costanza's like, just protecting that baby. Good, yeah, okay. Might as well throw away your Nerf gun, bro, because why the hell you'd bring it if you ain't gonna use it? But hey, at least the characters in the scene are believable. I mean, look how much Jeff Goldblum wants to save his wife. So am I. So am I. <laughs> so then they proceed to stand there doing absolutely nothing while the girl dodges tails and lasers and shit. Look how bad she wants to get away from those dinosaurs. But hey, not so badly that she can't do a dance first. Man, she sure looks like she actually thinks she's about to die from Stegosaurus. Hey, you just, hey, you just gotta turn around <laughs> and run. You don't. You don't have to keep on looking at him like that and dancing. The beginning scenes of this movie were at least somewhat promising, but it was at this point I knew perhaps we weren't going to get what we came to see. Even as a kid, I knew. I couldn't philosophize about it and pinpoint the exact reasons, but I knew. I could feel it. I mean, it's not hard to feel a drill being slowly punctured into your skull. But luckily, movies can't do that to you. It's just a movie about dinosaurs. I'm just saying, it's not hard to feel that, you know. So then, like, a group of raiders come to the island and start being a dick to dinosaurs for no real reason. Hey, guys, guess what? Guess who's the villain? I bet you never guess. So now we got two groups on the island. The marauding invaders seeking profit from capturing the dinosaurs and rebuilding Jurassic Park with a group of investors, and Jeff Goldblum and Co. Without guns, or helicopters, or anything. I think actually they brought a big target, you know, so they could put on a their faces. Target. So then Jeff Goldblum's group goes and frees all the dinosaurs from the camp for some reason, like friggin' Sam Fisher? Is there any reason they couldn't, you know, call international police or something? But you know, just not be retarded Our and keep making off. decisions like a bunch of five-year-olds with a bad case ate too many Snickers bars for breakfast. It's okay, they stopped making bad decisions eventually. Like, look, see? They just took a wounded baby T-Rex that's calling out to its mom into their camper. That was a good idea. Oh, Not a good idea. No. Hey, I'm starting to think this wasn't a good idea at all. And in a twisted turn of fate, even after they give the baby T-Rex back to its parents, they come back and are all like, LOL, JK! And they proceed to devour one of the only likable characters in the goddamn movie and try to kill the others! Hey, I don't blame him! I guess these here dinosaurs were just trying to weed those idiots out of the evolutionary pool! So then this guy goes off and dies to, like, fucking more, like, saltipuses. <laughs> what? what? No! No, I am, I am not letting this slide! How does a guy die to these? You could literally break all their necks one by one before they were able to kill you. How? 
This is akin to dying of pigeons. Not to mention, the only reason this guy died is because he wandered off from his camp into an island of wild dinosaurs. <clears throat> Not a no, good move. Bro. I don't feel sympathy for any of these characters, nor do I care for their survival God, because they're all idiots. So they're causing their own death through sheer idiocy or carelessness. Hey, coming back to the evolution thing for a second. Since this is a movie about dinosaurs, which are definitely a point of interest for evolutionary science, is this perhaps an allegory representing the theory of Darwinism? Showing how a species <laughs> evolves based on having its members who are less fit to survive or more sickly die off and leaving room for the genes of the stronger members to survive and live on? Did I just blow my fucking mind? Okay, never mind. I take it all back. This movie is, in fact, a work of pure genius. <laughs> Big congratulations, Steven. You really did it. You, <laughs> yo, you pulled a fast one on us, and you thought we wouldn't figure it out. So, uh, we're low on our T-Rex quota. Okay, there we go. There it is. Ah! Poking his head into the tent. <sighs> it would smell my Looking shit. shit up. Because I would shit can I, myself. Can I? Can I? now? So then they run through a field for a while. I don't, I just, I don't give a shit at this point. And then, oh no, it, oh shit, raptors, they're all gonna die. Thank God, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Steve knows what I'm saying. I don't know anyone named Steve, that's the thing. Oh wait, you can let Jeff Goldblum live. He's the only reason I kept my eyes open during this movie. Not to mention, he really is the only reasonable one throughout. I do not remember this shit. <laughs> it's good. It's good. <laughs> the fuck is the Hold on a second, how old is this milk? So let me get this straight. <laughs> This guy can't take on a bunch of pigeon dinosaurs, but this girl can Olympics raptors out of existence. Now, nah, don't see anything wrong with this one. Please continue. I think you know that your movie has taken a turn for the worse when when you when you're writing things like this into it. Yeah, what? that's horrible. Movie's over. Let's just let's just get the hell out of here. Oh, oh no. Oh no, tell him, Sushi. Okay, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, okay, I oh. admit it. This part is definitely pretty cool and it's got some great appeal. But at its core, it's literally nothing more than an excuse to have a T-Rex walking around suburban Los Angeles. But honestly, it feels pretty fresh. It feels new. It feels right. Jack. This is what the whole movie should display. have been. Something new. Not something old, but worse. I mean, isn't this what the blockbuster cinematic experience is all about? Experiencing something exciting and surprising. Hey, look at this awesome shot right here. speaks volumes, because it's real, man! Obviously this right here doesn't have the substance and carry a feature film, but heck man, it's a start! Jurassic Park The Lost World quite simply feels like it's just going through the motions. It's almost as if someone misinterpreted the best parts of the first movie and tried to make a second film based solely on those elements. Jurassic Park isn't just an amazing experience because dinosaurs! Its appeal comes from the human element. What would you do if you were stuck in a broken down dinosaur theme park? It brings it close to home and we can easily empathize with all the characters we see on screen. The reactions from the actors in this movie are genuine and probably similar to how you'd react in the same situation. The dinosaurs were really secondary to the emotions of the people in the midst of the action. A movie like this is only good if you care about the people caught up in it all. It's not about, whoa, better run away from all these dinosaurs on the green screen. It's really hard to care for a bunch of badly written characters that seem to be nothing more than a reason to see more dinosaurs go ping More of this? Yeah. Less of this. More of this. Less of this. How about some of this? Oh, Gross. Jeff, you, you're not looking so good. Gross. Hey, Jack, so I heard birds are a descendant of dinosaurs. So that makes you kind of a dinosaur. What do you, what do you think of this movie? That's true. Choo. Morty Gumbus. Well, there you have that. I think it's been... I mean two decades since i've seen the lost world maybe longer i just remember really enjoying it when i was younger but i guess that's because i wasn't looking for the glaring stupidity <laughs> that was in it i can't believe they had the scene of that that um girl doing the fucking olympic bars you know set 
and spinning around and kicking the raptor off the fucking out the window and onto a spike like what the hell was that now when it comes to those tiny dinosaurs ganging up and attacking that dude and killing him i think that they could get you those motherfuckers i mean i don't know how deep they rolled but a gang of little dinosaurs is still a menace like you don't even want one possum after you or one raccoon after you or like a little chihuahua scare the shit out of me so i can only imagine a chihuahua sized fucking dinosaur like no no thank you i think john missed on that one also fuck you john for constantly putting in clips from the movie the fly that is like one of the grossest nastiest fucking movies of all time and here you go with the body horror just out of nowhere fuck you for that um but jeff goldblum is the shit i will admit that every single um jurassic park movie that i've seen that has him in it makes me glad to see him there and uh yeah i don't remember much about this one and maybe that's the reason why I just thought that like the first couple of them were pretty good because I saw them when I was a kid, but I've watched the first one many times as an adult, probably like 15 or 20 times, but I don't think I've ever gone back to watch the second one, and that's probably why, because it was a steaming pile of shit, which means that it pretty well fits in with the ones that have come out recently. Um, interesting. I enjoyed this video. Uh, it's cool to see like old John Tron videos and the way he did his stuff and I'm guessing maybe this is one of the first movie reviews that he ever did. Very, very cool. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this reaction and I will see you in the next one. Bye.